and I hadn't, I didn't know. I thought I, would, I was thought I'd get Stephanie to talk to me. She was actually just relaying the information about her family. So at first, I didn't understand it. I was really confused. And then pretty soon, next thing you know, those 15, 20 voices that were coming through got down to five. Next thing you know, they got down to one. And then pretty soon, I was getting direct connect information to wherever I was going. And direct connect information means, you know, I go out and say I'm at a, at a house and, and John hung himself. I would actually get on the recorder somebody choking and saying, please help me. And then you would know that they're being choked because um, of the sound. So it was directly connected to the house. And that's what a direct connection is. If somebody hangs himself, you hear them actually choking. Um, or you hear their name saying, you know, John is choking. Or you might even hear something like that. So those are direct connections. And that's what I was getting. And I was getting that on missing person cases, too. So it was, it was very interesting. It was like progressing. My gift was progressing. And whenever I first started doing audio recording, I had no gift at all. I really had nothing going on. I couldn't see anything, feel anything, or hear anything until I decided to um, – I decided one day I was actually um, – you know, I was not telling the truth to my wife. I was telling lies to her, and I was saying, honey, I'm going karaoke, and I was obsessed to go to do other things. and. And one day I was actually driving with bad weather we had, and I went to this old church, and I put my recorder. I waited through three foot of snow, put my recorder on there, and I came back from the uh, the snow, and I realized that my Durango was uh, parked kind of goofy, and I was halfway in a ditch as I was excited to get there. And then I had this gentleman come around. I said, could you help me get out? And he said, yeah, I can help you. He said, give it gas. He put a chain on there. I said, give it gas, and he couldn't budge me. And then I just got on the phone with the tow truck, and another gentleman came around. He said, I can get you. I said, sir, you have the same truck, same chain. You're not going to be able to get me out. And he said, yes, I can. He said, don't give it gas. And, and he pulled me out like nothing. And then as I brought his chain back to him, he hands me a brochure and said, stop doing what you're doing. And I believe at that point that was an angel that came into my life because all this audio recording was causing me a lot of issues, and I was having a lot of um, – problems with bad luck. I was being pulled over at least 20 times in one year by cops. It was like I was having a rough time. I wasn't winning on the radio anymore. I was having a lot of bad luck. So I was messing with a lot of negative energy with these spirits. But then and then I just st started after that point. I said, what am I really doing here? So I actually uh, stopped doing the recording. And all of a sudden, every time I thought about the recording, I would look and there was a green Bible. And the green Bible was saying, listen, it was kind of like God was weaning me off the recorder i think about another voice to go do another recording there was another green bible there at the pump i did i had green bible shown to me for 30 days and then pretty soon i actually didn't want to do the audio recording hmm. kind of interesting very interesting wow so you had an angelic uh, uh intervention there <laughs> yeah yes and that's that's amazing. Um, well, you know, I, I, God knows what needs to go on and, and how you need to get to a place. So maybe you needed all that to get to a place so he could he could speak to you. Um, and that's exactly what happened after that point. You know, I still love my recorder. And I said to myself, you know, I'm really not obsessed as much anymore because I would go out and do a recording. And there would be no more voices. It would be gone. And I was kind of like getting weaned off of it. So. Next thing you know, I said to myself, you know, I'm going to go ahead and think about the next house I'm going to go to. Because I used to measure like 15 to 20 houses a day for a company mm -hmm. I used to work for, measure flooring. And then I would think about the next house. And I said to myself, well, I'm going to see, I'm going to see him, you know, a, a gentleman uh, with a limp in his leg. Um, or I'm going to see a, a, a person um, in a wheelchair come to the door. So next thing you know, I go to the house. And there it is. I'm, I'm ringing the doorbell. Nobody's coming. And then finally he comes to the door and he opens up the door and he's in a wheelchair. So what I was doing was seeing the future. I was remote viewing the future. And that's what was happening to me. And I, and I, was, I said, oh, my goodness, this is amazing. So let me go ahead and do this on another job. Pretty soon I was going from 20% accurate to 40% to 60%. Whatever I was seeing on the recorder was actually happening to me. Now, was I creating this environment, or was it just me remote viewing and seeing the future? So 
So pretty soon I was getting at 80 percent, and I said to myself, I got to do something with this. I got to do something. This is really amazing. This is way better than the audio recorder. So I got on a forum called Unexplained Mysteries, and you can go on there and look. And Rick Wade is still on there, but you go on there and look, and you can see my actual reading post. And I went on there and said, listen, let me see what's around you. At first, I was only seeing objects. And I would actually have people come on, and they would come on with fake names, fake pictures, and they say, connect with my energy. So I would connect with them, and I would see, for instance, I would see that um, um, just out of the blue that they had a black cat, they had a white cat, and they just had a gray cat that died. So I would write that and type it to them. And they said, oh, my goodness, I have a black cat, a white cat, and my gray cat just died yesterday. So things like that was really being given to me. Um, and then all of a sudden, I was just like, had tons of people coming to me. We're talking hundreds of people were asking for readings. And I was really accurate with my information. I could be able to see their living room, their dining room. I could be able to tell what they were actually had for dinner. And then pretty soon, one lady came up to me. She said, listen, uh, on the page, and she said, can you read my past life? I have an issue going on with me, and I want to know if this is something connected to my past life. And I said, well, I'll try it. I'm having such a great time. I'll try it. Next thing you know, I started reading her, and I said, well, you know, I, I see you actually were in the 1800s, and I see you're actually being chased by Indians, and you're on a wagon, and you fell over, and you broke your neck. And she, she came back. She was, like, in tears and just crying. And I, and, I, and I told her a bunch of other stuff. She said, listen, I've been to 10 doctors, and I paid thousands and thousands of dollars to see why the heck my neck is hurting me so bad. And she come to find out, they couldn't figure out anything was wrong with her neck. Nothing. They said it was all in her head. Well, after I gave her the reading, guess what happened? Her neck quit hurting. Her neck quit hurting because that's what it was. It was her dying in a past life, and she was actually feeling that pain from her past life. So I started reading past lives, and that started another journey for me. And that, and the thing is, I, I, wouldn't, I was not able to read a past loved one. I was not able to read a person's energy, just past lives. So I started getting that, getting killed by hundreds of people coming. And that's how my journey was starting with reading people. Hmm. Wow. You, you, you know, I'm glad I just uh, investigate the paranormal. I'm glad I don't have a gift like that because I don't think I could handle it. Mary, you, you had gifts like that too, didn't you? Well, I mostly communicated with the dead, saw the dead, heard them. Uh, I mean, I would go to sleep at night, uh, lay in bed, and I'd hear, like, all these voices. And they're all, like, at a whisper, and I couldn't make them all. It was like, that was heck to begin with. But um, I never I never was able to, you know, see into, like, the future uh, I do have a gift of detecting pregnancy on people. I still have it. <laughs> wow. I do. Everyone's scared when I say, hey, I have to tell you something. Everyone goes running. But it's true. <laughs> I'll be able to tell someone who's pregnant way before they even know themselves. And I did that to three women in church lately. And they're like, no one wants to come up to me anymore. I'm like, hey, I had nothing to do with it. Wow. And, 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 and that's the thing with people, you know, I mean, this is, you know, they're bringing this as a negative thing, but really, you know, what I'm doing is positive. Let me explain something to you. After I started doing reading uh, past lives, I started reading actual paranormal places. Then I started actual reading uh, uh, past loved ones. So whenever I started reading past loved ones, um, just amazing stuff was being given to me, direct information. But the thing is about it, people get confused with what I do. Uh, a lot of people, like a medium, will actually talk to the dead and actually talk to them and communicate with them and have them right there. Well, I don't do that. I actually, whenever I read an actual past loved one, I actually connect with their energy and I see things about them. I pick up their personality. I pick up how, sometimes I pick up how they, exactly how they died. I pick up their birth date. I pick up, uh, you know, if they uh, loved this or they hated that. You know, I pick up things when they were alive. This is a difference from an actual medium. I pick up things when they were alive. So I can tell them things that they know about, the ones that's asking about, it, you know. Like, for instance, let's say um, the father was a coal miner and he, he got lung cancer and died. Well, I would, 
start out by, you know, coughing or something. I'll say, well, I'm having chest issues, and it feels like it's something to do with my lungs. This is what I'm, you know, talking about the individual, and I keep seeing the coal mines is being given to me, and West Virginia is being shown to me. Well, the gentleman was from West Virginia, and he died in, you know, he actually died from the coal mine. So that's what I'm seeing, you know what I mean? I'm not seeing them whenever they go to the other side. I'm not allowed to see that. So, you know, other people might have a certain gift. They might be able to see people on the other side, or they might be able to find missing persons. I can only see certain things about a missing person before they actually die. After they die, it's like my connection is not there. I have to connect with the individual that actually killed them. Once I actually find the actual individual that killed them, I can read that individual and now get details about how they actually killed them. Mm-hmm. So that's how I read. I read people's energy. So how, how often have you done that? I mean, you, you've connected with a, with a killer that, that's... Well, I've been doing that ever since, um, you know, not too much after I started reading people. Um, so I've been doing that at least probably nine years. And I actually worked on a lot of actual cases out there. And the one case was uh, a huge case was Smiley Face Killers. You ever heard of that? Say that again. Smiley Face Killers. Uh, I'm not real sure. Um... Well, let me explain to you. What happens is college kids, they leave. Uh, They leave from a bar. They're drinking. They leave from a bar. And then all of a sudden, they disappear. And they're found either three days, three weeks, three months, or a year later, drowned in the water somewhere. And then there would be an actual smiley face painted on a rock, on a tree, on a fence, on a house. And that's what the smiley face killers were. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, I do remember reading something about that. Yeah. That's creepy. I'm sorry. Yes, it is. And, and I read over 20 of them that passed away. And the information I was given to uh, the actual people that actually uh, were actually working on the cases, I actually gave that information to him. And what he said to me, the actual uh, uh, professor that was working on it, he said, listen, Rick, this is, what's, this is amazing what you're doing because, you know, you see things, but you see a lot more than what you know what you're seeing. You actually see what I'm doing on the case. You see what the detective's doing on the case. You see what's happening with the family on the case. You see what's happened with the individual that disappeared. You're giving details about what happened that you c- cannot know. So I'm not only connected with the person that passed, I'm connected with everything that's going on. Right. Wow. Yeah. So how has that affected your life now as far as with your family? Well, yeah, I'll be honest with you. I've given you know, a lot of time to this. Pretty much I've given more time to this than I've given to my family. And it honestly has been kind of hard. You know, when I first started doing readings, I never charged people for readings. I did my first probably 5,000 readings I did offering a free service to people because I was learning, trying to understand, trying to receive the correct messages, trying to understand the messages that were given to me before I actually started an actual small fee for actually a reading. But it took me over 5,000 and, you know, and I had to, and people had to actually almost force me to actually start charging because what was happening is I was actually giving up all this time and energy. It was almost like I'm a big Coke bottle and people would actually stick straws in me and the you know, people that wanted readings and they would just suck me dry. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I was getting depressed. I was having issues. I was having anxiety because I was having I'm telling you, I'd have thousands of people coming at me, thousands. And I would be like thousands of people behind every year just trying to just doing seven to ten readings a day. It was taking over my life, and then people would come back ten or twelve times. They would not stop. They would actually just suck me dry. So this other uh, medium told me, so listen, this is what you've got to do. You've got to actually have a fee. If you have a fee, then they're, they're not, not going to come to you and suck you dry like that anymore. You know, they'll come there, they'll pay for one reading, and they'll probably move on, but they're not going to suck you dry. You're not going to have somebody come back seven or ten times. So it got to the point where I just started charging a little bit. And I, when I first started, it was $10. You know, it was $10 for half an hour. I mean, you can't get that anywhere. I don't yeah, care right. where you go. So I was giving them $10, and I was directly connecting with their loved ones or their past life or their energy. You know, and I, I still right now, I've been doing it, you know, charging for probably about 
five years now, and, and I only charge $50 for a reading, and that's an hour. And I usually, with that reading, I'm usually there an hour and a half, two hours, because I'm always communicating with them afterward. I mean, I'm 